Support for Criminal comes from BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. Listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash criminal. That's BetterHelp.com slash criminal. Support for Criminal comes from Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a mobile puzzle game that anyone can download and play. Whether you have a few minutes or a few hours, Best Fiends is the perfect puzzle game to get lost in. There are tons of characters that help you solve thousands of puzzles. And they're always adding new characters and challenges. Download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Criminal is a proud member of Radiotopia from PRX. In January, we held a live show at Motorco Music Hall here in Durham, North Carolina, where we live. It was our first, and we were pretty sure no one was going to show up. But people did come. It was a good crowd, and we hope a good show. We're going to play part of it today. It's an interview I did live on stage with Fran Schindler, who is, without a doubt, one of the most surprising people I've ever met. Okay, so I first met Fran Schindler three years ago. What I'll say is that she wasn't exactly what I expected. She's in her 70s, she's retired, and she's pretty sure the FBI has a rather keen interest every time she leaves town. Please welcome Fran Schindler. We aren't even scripted on this one, so we can really, we can mess up, we can do yes, whatever we, we can. like. Yes, we can. Okay, good. And we will. We will. Right. <laughs> so I just, let's just start with, with a question everyone gets asked. What is your criminal record? I have none. And <laughs> a parking ticket here and there, but that's it. And how often do you travel? Depending on the cases that I cover, um, I could travel once a month. Sometimes I don't travel for quite a while. Um, it all depends. And when you travel, how long do you stay? Generally, um, oh, three to four days. However, recently I had cases in two different parts of Florida. And since I detest renting cars at airports, I decided to drive. And I was gone for five to seven days, driving 1,950 miles up and down the state of Florida. And I'm all over any more road trips. You're fine next time. Um, when was the last time you saw someone die? Uh, January the 2nd of this year. Can you describe what you do? I am known as an exit guide. I sit with people who have made a decision and made a choice to end their lives on their own terms. And how does that process work? Well, I can tell you a little bit about, and, it, and this might be jumping the gun, and if it is, let me know. Well, I mean, um, I'll have how, to do you find, how do you find, how, how, does, how do you even get in touch with these people? I'm a volunteer with an organization that supports an individual's right to choose uh, to end their lives if they are mentally competent and suffering intolerably from a physical illness. Uh, the name of the organization is Final Exit Network. And uh, generally, people find us um, by word of mouth, or once they get a terrible diagnosis, they start cruising the internet, and they find us. 
So they call, you go through a rather rigorous process to make sure that everything's above board. And then you go there and what you do is act as a guide to educate and help them understand what the process will be. But what happens when you go is that what your organization has found to be the most effective, peaceful, whatever word you might like to use, way, is to place a, an individual will place a bag over their head and that bag will be connected in some way to a source of gas, which will create a peaceful death. How long does it take for someone to die in that manner? Our preferred method is, as you say, the use of an inner gas that requires the use of a hood. It is um, easy, it's 100% effective, and it's peaceful. Once a person pulls that hood down over their head, they are in unconscious in five to 10 seconds. That's all they know. And they will die within 15 to 20 minutes when their entire brain and brain stem shuts down. How many deaths have you been present for? I have been a compassionate presence at the bedside of 30 people. And when you're sitting in that room with someone who's chosen to end their life, are you just sitting there with them? What, what role, what are you doing when you're sitting with all these people? My role is a support person for the individual and for their family. In order for anybody to be able to do this that is involved with our organization, they must be mentally competent and physically able to carry this out themselves. I do nothing. Um, I do not touch anything. Um, I do not bring them anything. I sit with them because absolutely, I believe, Nobody should ever have to die alone. We do not come into this world alone, and we should not have to leave it alone. And I will sit there to witness their choice to end their life on their own terms, which I think is their absolute right. What are some of the, the kind of the range of laws which governs suicide and euthanasia, and, and what you do? What I do is not against the law. <laughs> and what a lot of people don't know is that to end your life, to kill yourself, to commit suicide is not against the law. But to assist a suicide is against the law, which we do not do. Assisting means providing something for someone, giving um, equipment to someone. We do not do that. And you ask about euthanasia, and people are often confused about this. Um, Jack Kevorkian euthanized Thomas Yauk. He put a needle in his arm and pushed the medicine into his body because Thomas Yauk had Lou Gehrig's disease and was totally paralyzed. Uh, euthanasia is most definitely against the law. So essentially, I'm taking a risk. I'm taking a risk by sitting with someone who is not committing a crime, but I am at risk of being accused of assisting when I do nothing. Go figure. It's illogical and irrational, but there is that risk. And so, you know, I imagine we, we've all heard, you know, that people assisted suicide and that that's illegal. But I imagine because of this and because you're aware, rightly or wrongly, of this risk, that it means that what you do becomes kind of logistically complicated in a way. Can you, can you tell us about one of, one of the cases where you've had to go to rather extreme lengths to protect not only yourself but to make sure that, that the that the person who wants to end their life has been able to do it? There, there are several cases I can tell you about. One um, incident uh, which entailed um, 
being able to have uh, access to where the woman lived and um, her caregiver um, had to be distracted and not be at home so that she would be able to carry this out uh, entailed my colleague and I uh, waiting for an all clear sign uh, sitting at a bus stop and um, the buses would pass and say, you want to get on? And we'd say, oh, no, we're waiting for the express bus. And one bus driver said, you know, you two are just so cute and precious sitting there. You had no idea the and, and, going yes, off. Yes, <laughs> and we just looked at each other and rolled our eyes because it's almost surreal. We were on our way to sit with someone who was going to die and we're just sitting at this bus stop uh, waiting for the sign that um, we can come and get into the apartment. Because, it, because you need some time, because you need to make sure that the, the person has a, has a chance to die, that, that someone doesn't walk in and rip the hood off or say, what is going on here? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, and, you know, the biggest thing is that... Um, this is a family decision also. Uh, it makes it more difficult when people have no family, but generally the family is there. And I've walked into the most secure apartments and condominiums in New York City uh, with a family, right, family member uh, accompanying me. And wherever we go, really we come as friends. And we spend enough time with people that we do become their friends, and they trust us. And we can walk in, nobody pays any attention to us. But you have to have a plan to get out, too, because you can't be there when the cops or the paramedics are, and you've got to be gone. There's always a discovery plan in place whenever anybody ends their life. We never do this without having a fully developed discovery plan so that they are found by someone. And um, if that someone is not right there at the minute, um, we leave, walk out the door, um, just as if we were visiting. Are you ever scared you're going to be caught? Actually, I'm not. If I were really scared, um, I don't think I'd be able to do this. I don't feel that I'm doing anything wrong. Um, there's risk. You try to minimize the risk as much as you can. And part of that comes by involving the family. But, but you, have, you, ha you haven't been caught yourself, but you have colleagues. It could easily have been swapped for you that have been. That's very true. And um, I don't know if we've got the time, no, but I'll, this I'll, is a rather uh, remarkable story. I'll Please. speed this up. In <laughs> uh, 2007, uh, a very ill man in Georgia with a significant head and neck cancer made the decision to end his life. He had an estranged wife, maybe divorced. Um, I don't know the whole situation there. However, the man ended his life. Um, the estranged wife came uh, to the apartment after the fact, found out that he had done this. She was not involved, and the reason I learned later that he never told her was because she had very strong religious convictions that he should not do it. Um, it was totally against her religious beliefs, but not against his. In her grief and anger, um, she called the Georgia police. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation uh, then mounted um, an inquest and investigation that went on from 2007 until 2009. Uh, when the FBI perpetrated a sting on our organization and my colleagues. They had a man apply for exit guide services, uh, supposedly with a terminal pancreatic cancer, uh, complete with falsified medical documents. 
the man was an FBI agent. Exit guides visited, he went through the whole process, the date was set for his exit. The guides came to the house, the man, just before he was ready to put on the hood and die, uh, asked to leave uh, the room for a minute, perhaps to go to the bathroom. I don't know what excuse he used, but he walked out of the room. As he did, FBI agents swarmed into the room, uh, arrested the two guides. They had everything that went on on videotape. They simultaneously, as they arrested those two guides, arrested other members of Final Exit Network all over the country. They arrested the medical director. They arrested my colleague in uh, Maryland, who was also um, a coordinator. Uh, the treasurer, several other people on the board of the network, they went to their homes, and if they were not home, they broke down the door. They went in, took their computers, their papers, their documents, and my four colleagues were arrested and jailed and indicted and finally let out of jail on $60,000 bail. That incident went through the courts until 2012. They lived with the threat of jail time uh, on bail for all those years. Subsequently, we prevailed in the state of Georgia uh, based on the First Amendment. They could not prove that we had assisted a suicide I might believe in the fact that someone should be able to take their own life or not. I mean, many people do have that ability, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and sit with someone while they do it. You know, I can feel passionately about a topic, but just talk about it with friends. I'm not going to get on an airplane or be driving through Florida. Why do you do what you do? What is it? What happened? I mean, Go ahead, ask me. What <laughs> happened? That, what happened that led what, me to yes, this? What right? Um, I mean, something. What happens? What? My background is in nursing. Um, I've seen suffering. I've seen death. Um, I have had my own foot on a banana peel twice. Um, I had a brain tumor. Fortunately for me, it was benign. Only cost me total hearing in one ear. Small price to pay. Um, I have had breast cancer and um, survive that. It has always been in the back of my mind that um, if things didn't actually work out for me, I would choose to end my life. Finally, um, I found out about Final Exit Network, um, joined, uh, the year later uh, went and trained as an exit guide. And what I experienced there, learning about, number one, the method, and number two, the fact that there were people there who would sit with me. Um, I couldn't, in good conscience, just take that away and say, oh, fine, for me, I know what I need to know now, too bad for you. Um, it was such an experience of peace of mind for me to know that um, if I got a diagnosis that wasn't to my liking, um, I had the choice to end my life and there would be people there that would sit with me while I did it. And um, how could I not give that to other people? Um, I guess the last question, how do you plan to die? Well. I will end my own life. Um, I have benchmarks uh, for myself. If I get a diagnosis of uh, dementia, the clock starts ticking. Um, if I really am in such straits um, that as long, long as I remain mentally competent and physically able to do this, but if I am in, in danger of losing my independence, I will end my life. 
I will not go to a nursing home. I saw my mother die horribly in a nursing home, and what I know is that my children will never see that happen to me. So you're, so you're prepared? You're, I'm prepared. I ready. know what I have to do. Do you have any hoods yourself? Yes, I do. Uh, right after I went through training, I ordered a hood from a woman named Charlotte Heidorn, who was in California. And do you have a backup? Uh, I do have two hoods. <laughs> so you're ready to go. And that is why the FBI ended up coming to my door. Because this you have two. Charlotte Heidorn, who sewed hoods for the worldwide Death with Dignity movement, um, was found on the internet by a young suicidal man, didn't have anything to do with our organization. He sent for one of her hoods, got it, and he killed himself. When his family found him dead in their grief and anger, they called the police and the Border Patrol and the state police in California went to the door of 91-year-old Charlotte, um, took her to jail to see if she could get out. They spread that information all over, and consequently, they got my name from buying my second hood, so they were on their way to my house to see if um, I was suicidal. Fortunately, I watch enough crime shows that when a great big black SUV is parked in front of my townhouse. I'm not about to open the door. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us. That was my interview with Fran Schindler from our live show back in January. A lot of people helped make that night happen. Motor Call Music Hall, Ryan Shiver, Jeff Polish, who runs Durham's version of The Moth, it's called The Monty, to our band, Uncle Igor. You can find out more about them at uncleigor.com. Thanks, as always, to our artist, Julianne Alexander, who designed our set and merchandise. And by the way, you can buy hand-printed criminal shirts and mugs at our website. This is criminal.com. Criminal is produced by Lauren Spohr, Eric Menel, and me. We're a proud member of Radiotopia from PRX. If you haven't already, you should listen to the latest episode of Love and Radio. There was this bright window, and there were these two people in there, and they were naked. This young couple in their 20s. And I don't know, am I supposed to have maybe respected their privacy and just looked away? But it's impossible because that's the way the chairs face. <laughs> they face the window. I couldn't not see them if I wanted to. But I guess I could have not gotten the binoculars. Check out Love and Radio and all the other Radiotopia shows on iTunes or at radiotopia.fm. Radiotopia from PRX is made possible with support from the Knight Foundation and MailChimp, who celebrate creativity, chaos, and teamwork. We'll be back in a few weeks with a new story. I'm Phoebe Judge. This is Criminal. Radiotopia. Thanks to BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. Listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash criminal. That's betterhelp.com slash criminal. Thanks to Truebill for their support. It's likely you're still paying for a subscription you no longer use, and maybe you've thought about canceling it but haven't gotten around to it yet. Let Truebill do the canceling for you and put that money back into your pockets. From forgotten subscriptions to the ones you just don't need anymore, Truebill is a new app that helps you catch and cancel them all with just one tap. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com criminal. Go to truebill.com slash criminal. It could save you thousands a year.